Hey, what is going on, everybody? How are you all doing today? I hope you all are having a wonderful and fantastic day today, and if not, hopefully you all will have a better tomorrow. So today, I wanted to talk about the problems of unanswered questions and what they could possibly cause for Ruby. Because we have questions that have dragged on for a long time, and I felt that it would be best to talk about what happens whenever questions go unanswered. So, sit back, relax, I hope you all enjoy, and let's go ahead and jump right on into this discussion. Questions are something that we all have. We all ask, and we all hope to get the best provided answer. And in a series in particular, we hope that these questions are answered consistently, and we hope that they really make sense into certain areas that we didn't know the answer to already. And there's never anything wrong when writing a series to have questions for your audience that will later on be answered, that you will eventually touch up on when the moment is right. But when you drag on questions, or when questions are not answered at all, when the series never answers the question, and then when the author, the writer, creator, whatever it may be, they decide to not touch up on this, there are issues. Because then there's a plot hole, or there's an inconsistency. It creates several issues within a series, and your audience will forever be left with this irritation, because then they don't have this answer. And they will never, sadly, have this answer. And sometimes writers can even forget certain things they put into the series if they wait too long to touch up on something. And then by that time, they may have forgotten what they had set that question up for in the first place. And that creates a multitude of problems when it comes to a series. And you don't want that. You don't want that in your series. You certainly don't want to forget things. And the one thing that's good about questions, though, one thing that can be very good, you want to have questions to entice your audience. You want to create suspense for your audience. And then what happens when you create the suspense? This keeps them hooked. This makes them want to stay around and figure out what is the answer to this question. And that's not a bad thing. You want to do that from time to time, but you just can't let it sit there forever. You can't tease the audience with a certain question in which Ruby has a problem with doing that, which more or less can make the audience frustrated and it can upset them because after a while you think okay well the suspense was here but now it's dying down more into when are you going to get to this point point?" and we've had several questions not just one not just two there's still multiple questions that ruby still has to touch on that it has not covered and that is not good after a while i mean here's the thing one big question which has been beat to death but the silver eyes there was an opportunity in volume five especially to bring this up and what happens doesn't get brought up and we get teased with this moment again to really have nothing out of it and that's a problem because that is suspense that has been building up that is now frustration it is a question that people want answered sooner rather than later at this point now it has gotten to the point that the silver eyes is something that needs to be discussed more. I mean, yes, we understand that it actually has a toll on the Grim. It's effective against them. We understand that it's effective against Maidens, but there's still more to this. You know, we need to actually see what this does, not just be told that, oh yes, Silver Eyes were good against this, good against the Grim, good against Maidens. We need more than that. We need to see what it can actually do. We need more of an answer here. And this could develop a character. This is a potential answer to a question that can help a character grow. This could help Ruby significantly. And this is rather being teased yet again because it seems that the writers want to tease this. So it's more frustrating now. Like I said, it's not suspenseful anymore. It's just frustrating and it needs to be answered. It goes back to another question that was brought up. And this actually has to do with Pira. Now you're probably wondering... What question could really be brought up about Pyrrha since she is dead at this point? Well, one big thing that Miles stated, and you gotta remember this, because Miles had stated Pyrrha's mother would eventually be brought into this because Pyrrha is dead, and obviously her mother is still alive. We know that she has a mother out there. And, of course, since Pyrrha was from Sanctum, we can assume that she lived in Mistral, her and her mother, more than likely. So, considering that being the case, that is a question that we don't know. Do we know that her mother knows that she's dead? No, we don't know that. 
And this is a question that has not been answered, that is still sitting there. And since Miles has stated, oh yes, she will be important in the future, years ago. Thing is, she was never brought up at the potential chance that this could have happened. Therefore, meaning two things. One, we don't learn anything of whether her mother knows that Pyrrha is dead or not. And two, this could open gates to Pyrrha's past a little bit. And this could just show off a little more about the bond that her and her mother may have had and telling us what kind of a person her mother may have been. You see, that's a big importance that was thrown out. It's something that could lead on to more of a character. And another thing, we get the concept that Ospin has obviously been reincarnating over and over again. Now, of course, this was a question we had for a long time, but it seems that this has been more so retconned with the God story and all of that. So then this leads to another question. If Ospin's been reincarnated by being cursed by the gods, which, like I said, is a retcon, then what is his actual semblance? Because in World of Remnant Aura, it stated that if you trained enough with your aura, you could be more than simply just an ordinary man. Then what was that build up for? And what could Osman's semblance be if this is being retconned and they don't go back to the idea of, oh look, Osman could have just been lying about this and this is his true semblance. See, that leaves that question there. And then another question that we have when it comes to Cinder, for example, we could go with two things really, but... Let's go with the one that a lot of people think about. Volume 3, at the very end. We see that Ruby has the silver eyes after Pyrrha dies. And we see, obviously, Cinder, she takes a hit here. She gets hit pretty hard by the silver eyes and that attack, but we didn't see what happened there. And that's still a mystery, because we go from Cinder looking the way she did in the beginning to Cinder looking battle-scarred, and we still haven't seen that moment play out. We know that something happened, but did we see that entire moment play out play by play? No, we didn't. We just know that something happened, Grim Dragon was then frozen, Cinder gets injured, and we see that in Volume 4, and that's about it. The rest of it's up to your interpretation at this point for right now. And that's kind of a problem because you want to see these questions unravel. You want to see them be answered. Not only that, but you want a satisfying answer. You want something that is satisfying. You don't want to sit there. You don't want half-baked answers. And you don't want questions to not be answered. You know, you want questions to be answered at certain points in time. And they need to make sense. They need to be consistent. And they really need to be thought through. Because if not... These answers are not going to be good, or we're never going to get answers at all. And the worst part is, if the question is forgotten over time. You don't want to do that, because that will forever leave the question out there. Well, how did this happen? Why did this turn out the way this turned out? And then it becomes a question that will forever be solidified, that was never answered through time. And if it gets lucky enough to be answered eventually, well, that's great, as long as it's a well-thought-out answer, one that makes sense. But hopefully... Volume 6 can justify that. Hopefully Volume 6 can start answering questions that we need to have answered. Hopefully Volume 6 can start on that path of doing this and even helping with characters because questions can develop characters with the right answer. And they just need to be thought out. And it's not that you can't come up with more questions in the series later on. It's just, remember, don't wait too long to answer them. But anyways, let me know what you think down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, hit the video with a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And share this with your friends if you found this informative or useful. Well, anyways, I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful and fantastic day today. And remember, if today was not a good day, tomorrow could always be better. Take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And have yourselves a good one out there, everybody.